Okay, so I want to do a quick video here to illustrate a gotcha that I see some people running into, and it has to do with the email confirmation request um, widget. So let me just zoom out here. This is a campaign uh, or a section of a campaign that um, Maritza and I were chatting about earlier. And I recreated just a section of her campaign so that I could illustrate this example, right? So what's happening here is they have a purchase, um, and then she is asking them to confirm their email address, right? So there's an email saying, hey, please confirm your address. Once they click, um, it's going to move them out of this and into this sequence, right? And that's then where they get the purchase follow-up. And uh, there's a 30-day timer, and then some other stuff happens. And um, if they get tagged, then it, um, it actually starts a different part of the campaign, okay? So we're just looking at this section right here. Uh, now, if... Uh, if they already have confirmed their email address, right? So if they purchase and they have already confirmed their email address in a different campaign or somewhere else, uh, it's just going to skip right over this, right? So the system will recognize, hey, they've already got a confirmed email status and it'll drop them in right here. So for people who are already confirmed, this will work perfectly fine. For people who aren't confirmed, here's what it's going to do. It's going to put them in here. Um, and you can see there's an, a confirmation email and then there's a three day delay. Um, and then we want them to click the link in that email and then we want them to move on. Uh, the problem, and if they click the link, they're gonna move on, no, no issue. But the problem that we run into is uh, if they aren't confirmed, then they're gonna go in this sequence. But now that they're in this sequence, the only way for them to move on is if they confirm. So if they don't confirm their email address, well, they're gonna stay in this sequence. And if they're a purchased customer, if they're someone who just bought, well, they're probably expecting their content um, or access or, or you know whatever it was that they purchased. So this goal is effectively holding them up from, from receiving the content that they presumably paid for. And anyone who doesn't click could be stuck here and probably wouldn't be super happy about it. So there are a couple different ways that you can solve this. The easiest way is just to move this goal up, just like that, and then draw a line from here to here, okay? And so what that does is when they buy, they get put into this sequence. If they click, they immediately move on. But if they don't click, they're gonna stay in here. And at the end of three days, they're gonna move on anyway, because now there's a direct path leading them to the fulfillment. So if they click, they move on. If they don't click, they're going to move on anyway. And depending on how long you want them to you know, wait or how much time you want to give them, you could dial that down to one day or four hours or something like that. So that's method number one for circumventing that issue. Uh, the second method would, would be um, just by branching them right up front. So doing something like this, right, where when somebody purchases they go into both sequences, right? So you could say, right, I want them to receive the, the follow-up, but I also want them to get this email confirmation. Um, and for this scenario, you just, you wouldn't need to set up any rules because anyone who purchases, you would want them to go into both of these sequences um, to confirm, but also simultaneously to deliver just to make sure that there's no delay in them getting their content. The only consideration might be um, you know, you might not want them to get an email here and an email here at the exact same time. So you might have to use some delay timers to just make sure that the emails are coming at a cadence that is digestible. Um, okay, so that's, uh, that's the issue. And those are the two ways that I would work around solving it. Uh, one final uh, tip for you here is I sometimes like to give people multiple chances to confirm their email address, right? One is fine, um, but if I really want them to confirm, sometimes I'll drop in a second one here and you know connect it like this. So if they, if they go up here, right, they're gonna get an opportunity to confirm, and then if one day goes by or three days is the default uh, and they still haven't confirmed, then they're gonna slide down here and they'll get a second email with a different subject line and slightly different language, giving them another chance to confirm. Now, if they do confirm the first time, they'll never see that second email. So this is just kind of a contingency plan. The, the reason that I'm emphasizing this and spending time illustrating this point is because I think that 
email deliverability is going to become increasingly more dependent on the relationship you have with your client's inbox. And asking your customers or giving them the opportunity to confirm their email address is really only going to help. In fact, it's it's more than likely going to pay dividends in the long run. The more steps you can take to be respectful of your prospects and, and your customer's inbox and the relationship you have with them, it'll just help keep your emails welcome there, um, both from the prospect's perspective, but also from the email client's perspective. They're gonna deliver your emails and prioritize them and put them in the right folders if your customers have taken the steps to say, hey, yeah, this is content that I want. So now it's your turn as a marketer to give your customers, to give your prospects that choice. Give them the opportunity to raise their hand, to confirm their address. It's only gonna pay dividends. It's only gonna help you in the long run. Hope this helps. Take care.